Hi there. If you're coming on a Baber and Bioinformatics training course, then one of the things that we do is that we make all of the software available to you in an online environment that you access via your web browser. Now, in many cases, we may have set this up for you. So all you get is a server address, a username and a password that you can use to log in. But these environments are also publicly available. For some versions of our courses, particularly the ones where you learn independently based on online material, uh, we don't establish the server for you and you'll need to set that up for yourself. So in this video, I'm going to show you using the information that you get when you sign up for a course, how you would actually set up a server which you can then use to access both the software and the data for that course. All of our online environments are built on top of the Amazon cloud. So they're built in a system called Elastic Compute, uh, which is part of Amazon's cloud services. So what you will need to be doing for this is to set up a temporary server in Amazon's infrastructure running our software. Um, and then from that, you can then log in use the software for the course, and then log out and shut the server down when you're finished. If you want to use the same environment to uh, process real data or do real work, that's fine. It all works the same. When you sign up for one of our online courses, you'll get a page that looks something like this. So this is the welcome page for one of our courses. Uh, this is for the introduction to R1. And on that introduction page, there will be some setup instructions. So the important thing to see from this is going to be this piece of information down here, uh, which gives you the details of how to configure the server that you actually need to set up. To actually set up a server, you will need an Amazon account. So if you don't have one, uh, either you will need to create one or you'll need to get uh, your work to set one up for you. And then in a web browser, you need to go to console, C-O-N-S-O-L-E dot A-W-S dot Amazon dot com, okay, which is the base uh, interface for the Amazon services. Now, I've logged in in this session, so um, I'm just seeing the console straight away. You will need to put in your password uh, to get to this stage. The first thing you should check uh, when you come in is which Amazon zone you're located in. Um, so Amazon has different uh, data centers all around the world, and generally you want to pick one that's close to where you are physically. Now, normally it does a pretty good job of uh, picking one for you, uh, but it's always worth checking. So up here on the top right, you can see a little drop down that says where you are. So I'm currently uh, assigned to the London zone, but you can see where all of these are. Uh, around the world and pick the one that's closest to you. All of these zones operate independently. So wherever you set your server up, that will also be where you see the details of the servers um, and also where you're going to close it down from. I'm gonna stick in London because that's fine for me. And then I need to go to the EC2 uh, section of Amazon, which is the Elastic Compute Cloud, which is the thing that allows you to set up temporary servers. Um, you may well see it in your recently visited services if you've done anything before, but if not, you can click on all services and then select EC2. So inside here, uh, we have uh, a list of the servers that we already have running. So at the moment, we can see that in my account uh, under instances running, I have nothing. So I'm going to start up a server using the details that I got in the course instructions. Um, and then that should allow me to access it. So to start a new server, you click on the button that says launch instance, and we're not going to launch it from a template, we're going to do a, a completely configured instance launch. Okay, at this point, uh, you're going to need the information that comes with your course. So in the course page down here, there are some pieces of information that tell you how to configure the server. The first page you get to is the base image, so which operating system uh, the uh, course is built on. So down here it tells me that the base image for this course is this CentOS 7 uh, x64 with updates. So I can just copy that. And if I go into here, I can then search for that in the search box here. Now, to start with, it's going to search in Amazon's own uh, machine images, uh, which it often won't find, uh, but all of them will be present probably in the what's called the AWS marketplace. So if you click on that, you should then see this is the 
uh, image that we want to use. Once you've found the image, press select. Uh, it will bring up a scale of charges for using this. Now, there are two levels of charge. You pay per hour for using the server that you set up. Okay, so Amazon charge you by the hour. As you can see, it's not very much. Um, so depending on the size of server you've got, it's going to be somewhere around sort of 10 to 20 US cents per hour. Um, all of the images that we use are free to use the software on the images. So if you get to here and you see something where the software value in here is not zero, then go back a step and check uh, because all of the images we use are free images. You can scroll down and once you've checked this, uh, press continue and it will move on to the next step. The next thing you need to select is how big a server you're actually wanting to set up to run the course on. And again, that's one of the pieces of information which is given to you. So here it says the server type, and it tells me that the server type for this course needs to be T2 medium. So on my list of servers here, I can see the T2 medium is this one. So I just click on that. Now, don't at this point press the blue button, which allows you to skip through a load of options, some of which we need to set. We need to go through to the next button and say configure instance details. Okay, so make sure we press that one to move to the next page. Inside here, there's an awful lot of settings that you're not going to need to touch. Uh, we're only going to set up one instance, so that's fine. The bit that we do need to change is right at the bottom under these advanced details. So this last box down here um, says user data, and inside the user data, we can paste a configuration script that does all of the setup for us. On our course details on here, you'll see there will be a user data section which is a very small script, which you can again just copy and paste into that box. Okay, and that will then do all the actual configuration once the server's started. Again, don't press the blue button to start the server. Go to the next to the add storage. In here we see uh, the amount of disk space that the server has, and this is another aspect that we tell you what is needed for the course. So here it tells us that the course requires 20 gigabytes of storage. So just in here, when it says the size in gigabytes of the disk, I'm going to need to increase this from 8 to 20. We can then step through to add tags. Um, tags are ways in which we can annotate the servers that we set up, but you're not likely to be setting many of these up, so I, I'm not going to put anything in here. What we will need to do is to configure what's called a security group, uh, which sets up the firewall on the server. So um, we haven't got any security groups set up, uh, which is what you won't have to start with. So we're going to create a new group. By default, the only thing that will be allowed to get to the server is SSH, uh, which we can leave on if you want. Uh, we're not actually going to use that directly. All of our servers are designed to be accessed via a web browser, so we need them to be accessible via what's called HTTP, which is the language that web browsers speak. So we need to press Add Rule, and under Add Rule in the type, we can simply select HTTP from this list. Okay, so if we look down here, HTTP is there. So if we do that, it will fill in the details for us. And then finally, we can go on to review and launch. Okay, it's going to give us a warning to say, no, this is open to the world. So anyone can potentially connect to that, but that's okay. Uh, there's then a review of all the details. And finally, we can go to launch. Now, what it will make you do at this point is uh, to assign a security key to the server. You're actually not going to need to use this because you're going to go in through a web interface, but it will make you do it anyway. Um, so if you've created any security keys in a previous session, you can just select them from the list. But uh, for the first time you come in, we'll say create a new key pair. You've got to give it a name. OK, so I'll call this uh, my course and then you have to download the key pair. So it will download a little file called a PEM file. See I'm here, uh, that you can just save somewhere. And then you can launch your instance. Okay, so now it's setting up the server that I've just selected. 
And once it's done that, it will direct us to uh, a page where we can see the status of it. So here it says the following instances have been launched. And if I click on that, it will take me back to my little console. And uh, we can see the status of the server. So at the moment, it's pending. Um, very shortly, it will turn into running. Um, but even after the server is running, it's generally going to take about 15 to 20 minutes for it to download and configure all the software that it's going to use. So I'm going to pause the video uh, at this point, uh, and then I'll come back uh, when it's had time to build, and then I'll show you how to actually use the server. OK, it's now a few minutes later, and the server will have had time to build. We can now go through to the web interface and log into the server that we've just created. To do that, we're going to need two pieces of information from the server details that we can see in our EC2 console. So the two things that we're going to need are going to be the IPv4 address, something that looks like this, four numbers with dots in, and we're going to need the instance ID, so that would be this value here. Um, the instance ID will always be shown on here. If you can't see the IPv4 address, you might just need to scroll across to see it. Um, if you still can't see it, then if you click on the little uh, options button up here, then you can make sure that it's turned on uh, inside the list of columns that are visible uh, to make sure that it's definitely there. To connect to your server then, simply copy this IPv4 address open a new tab and paste that into the uh, search bar of your browser and it will take you to the server that you've just created. You'll then see a login page. Uh, the login page may not look exactly like this. There are a few different uh, styles of this where we use different systems for different courses. So a Python course will look different to an R course, which will look different to uh, a sequencing course, for example. Um, but in any case, you'll see some kind of login page with a username and password. The username to log in is always student. Okay, so we don't bother listing that because it's always student. And then the password is going to be the instance ID of your server. Okay, so you copy this value and paste that into the password box and then sign in. And then you'll get to whatever uh, interface the course that you're using uh, provides uh, and both the course and the data for the course should uh, all be ready and waiting for you at that point. Okay. When you've finished with your uh, server, so you've got to the end of your course and you're all done, you will then need to close down the instance that you'd started. Uh, okay, because remember, whilst this is running, you are being charged a few cents per hour uh, to run this. So uh, to close a server down, you can simply right mouse click on the line of the server that you want to close down and say terminate instance. It will confirm and if you say terminate, then it shuts down the instance and you'll stop being charged at that point. So that's all you need to know to set up uh, a server for an individual course. If you want to see the full range of uh, instances that we can set up and the different uh, services that you can launch uh, on Amazon Web Services, then you can go and have a look at the GitHub repository in which we maintain all of our uh, server image data. And that's got a complete list of all of the images that we make. So to get to that, it's github.com slash s hyphen Andrews. And then the repository is AWS training images with underscores in between. And if you go to that, uh, you'll see all of the scripts that we use. Uh, but also there is a documentation here where it says launching on AWS.md. And if you click on that, you can have a kind of text walkthrough of much of the same stuff that I've talked to you about here. Uh, but if you keep scrolling, then at the bottom of that is a list of all of the configurations for all of the courses. And remember that you can set these up at any time. You don't have to be on a course. Uh, you can still use the software stack. So for all of the different courses that we set up, you can see the configuration details for those, and you can set the things up from there. OK, I hope that's useful and that you enjoy attending the courses. <laughs>